Hello, good everybody. Welcome, good afternoon, good morning, uh, wherever you are in the world. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Thriving Adoptees podcast. So today, I'm delighted to be uh, to be joined by a, uh, a fellow Brit. Uh, I guess do you have dual nationality now? Or are you still? Yes, I have both. Yes, dual nationality. So uh, Paul, uh, Paul, Phil, delighted to to have you on the show. Paul was a Brit, but now he lives in uh, in the states. So please, uh, well. First off, welcome to the show. Um, great Sir, to have you. Yeah, thank you so much. You know, I'm, uh, I lived in England for all my teenage and before teenage years, and then I moved to America in 1994. Um, and I started the uh, website like Look Up UK in 1996, and uh, that transformed into the UK Birth Adoption Register, which was started around 2000. So that's my uh, connection to this. And of course, I was adopted. So, uh, and I did my own search and found my family in uh, between 96 and 2000. So that's, that's my connection to all of this. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been doing some, you know, we, we, uh, listeners, we, we connected, Paul and I connected last week and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a, a great story uh, um, about how, how, his, how he has used what he's learned through his own search. To help others search and uh, and and reunify. So, uh, what we wanted to do today, really, is or what I wanted to do is is to give Paul a, a, a platform to share what he's learned um, in his own search and in in his helping um, in his help for other adoptees find their birth parents that he feels would be um, be, be useful to you, listeners. So. Um, I think one of the first things that you said last week when we spoke, Paul, was about expectations. Was that, right. is, that, is that the biggest thing? Is, is, that the, is that the biggest thing that you want to, to share? Or what would you like to share with the listeners? Yeah, I mean, I mean the, 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 I, through doing this, and we've reunited thousands of people through the website, you know. Um, the, my biggest thing is don't wait. If you, want, if you think you want to find it, but you're not sure, don't wait. Because I've had cases where people have found the information out and then they put it off a couple of weeks, literally a couple of weeks. We had two cases where the person they were looking for passed away during that two weeks, which is you know crazy when you think about it. But when you're doing thousands, I guess there's, there's a chance. But we had two of them. Um, and I started Look Up UK, I guess subconsciously, because I wanted to see you know, how people reacted to each other to see kind of how it was. I don't know if it was like directly in my head, but I mean, I think it was, and I just didn't realize. Um, so I, I got to see some reunions and then I started doing my own. You know, I, my birth mother was on the certificate. You know, I went, I was born in 1971. So I had to go to the uh, therapy session that they make you go to before they hand over your, your birth certificate. Um, and the reason behind that is that before 1975, your family was told they, want, they were never going to be found, you know. So in 1975, I think, it, I believe, the law changed saying that the adoptees have the right to get their original birth certificate, whereas that quote didn't. Um, so you go to, I had to go to a, a guy in New York City. Um, it's kind of funny because they give you that booklet that says, here's a list of people you can go to that will, you know, talk to you. And then right at the bottom, it says, unless you can find someone else. <laughs> so, you know, I just looked up a guy that, that did adoption stuff in New York City and I went to him and uh, he gave me a paper that showed me the name and then he gave me a, an application form that you mail off to get the full certificate, you know. So I had my birth mother's name um, and the address at the time. And me and another guy, it was 1997, 1998. We ran the electoral roll and we found there was somebody living at the same address with the same name, just spelled slightly differently. Like it, it, the first name was Leslie, but it, on the paper it was L E Y, in the house it was L I E. Um, and then it turned out that was actually the father. Yeah. So I wrote a letter to her and, and I got a phone call at 3 a.m. because I guess people in England don't know the time difference. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or at least she didn't. <laughs> you know, so we got a call at like 3 a.m. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then she was actually going on, on holiday to California like shortly afterwards, and she diverted her her flight to stop in JFK Airport in 
New York City and uh, I got to meet her and she got to meet my daughter who was a baby at the time. And then uh, that was the only time I met her because, you know, after that, every time I was going to England to visit, you know, my adopted family and that, the, uh, she was going on holiday that week, you know? So I get, I don't know, what you know, weird reaction, but I've seen it before. And, I, and like I said, I'm not a licensed guy. I, I, you know, I'm not, I don't have certificates with my name. You know, I'm just pretty, pretty darn good at finding people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. But uh, yeah, that's that's kind of what happened. I managed to get my uh, father's name out of her during that meeting, and uh, I came back after, and I, again, I went to the electoral roll, and I found thirty-six people with that name, and. Uh, Luckily, I ha I was working somewhere where the guy in the mailroom was very generous towards me. <laughs> we mailed 36 letters to England and uh, got a few phone calls. And then uh, I guess the fifth or sixth one was the guy who had no idea I existed. Um, the letter I wrote didn't mention adoption. It was, I'm just trying to find an old family member. And were you, he was engaged to her, but when she found out she was pregnant, she decided that she didn't want to be with him. And uh, so broke the engagement off and didn't tell him. So the letter said, you know, were you engaged to this person? That's all I wrote in the letter. He called up and I'm like, uh, you, you might want to sit down for a second. And he's like, no, I'm, I'm sitting against my counter in my kitchen. And I'm like, ah, well, I don't know if that's going to work out for you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm your... Uh, I'm your kid, <laughs> you know? and uh, you know he was very surprised, and uh, went through the emotions over the next few days. He was upset that she didn't tell him. She had two other, he had two other sons that he raised on his own after me, and he was really PO'd because he wanted to. Uh, he would have raised me. He wouldn't have let me get adopted. But you know, it worked out good. I got, went to visit him many, many times. Stayed with the family, and. Uh, you know, he was all, he was in the same circle as the, as the birth mother. Yeah. And uh, I guess she kind of avoided him <laughs> at that point. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, I don't think they ever spoke about it. So, yeah. but yeah, that's wow. my story when it comes to finding. I had quite an easy find. Um, when people get married, it gets a little bit harder, but you can, uh, you know, you can, you can go on websites like findpass.co.uk and look up marriages. Um, for some reason, some of them are missing on there. A little bit I've noticed um, if you're, and then I also use free BMD which is another marriage birth death site which is um, one that's done by regular people they just key them in so again there's some missing there but with, between the two you'll find a, a marriage you'll find more kids they've had you know so you can find sons and daughters sometimes you have to do that because the you know the mother may be passed away you know or uh, Harder to find. Been married more than once. It's always, you know, fun to dig through and find that. Um, but uh, yeah, like going back to the the fact that you shouldn't put it off. Don't put it off. You know, it's it's always good to know. You know, what I mean, I mean, some people have like weird reactions. Like I heard, I've heard stories of of mothers all trying to be the mother again, and they just like come move into your house and stuff. <laughs> you know, that's like one of the weird ones. But. Uh, and like finding out the father's name is sometimes hard. Um, sometimes you get it on, you know, I think you had it on your birth uh, adoption file, right? Yeah. I never did get my adoption file because uh, my agency closed. Um, and I didn't really, once I did the search, I really kind of didn't need it, you know, because I already found everybody. And, uh, you know, I gained three brothers, a stepsister. Yeah. I had a I had a half sister from the mother. I mean, yeah, the family went, you know. But uh, weird reaction with the kids because, like, you know, it's really what because the the kid, you know, the one of the sons was the oldest kid. That was one, yeah. All of a sudden, I'm the oldest kid. Yeah, you know, he was. I, I think yeah, he was so powered, wasn't he? He he, he yeah. was like, he was he was cheesed off because he was no longer the eldest kid. So. Yeah, and then he also thought that uh, uh, you know, my dad had cheated on his mom because he didn't know how to do math because <laughs> 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 I was way before that I was a year and a half before that whole thing you know so yeah. but yeah you know it's pretty it's pretty good you know we have thousands and thousands of members 
on on the UK Birth Adoption Register site. And as I said, we've we've matched thousands of people. Some days we'll match ten, then we'll go for a week doing none. So it's yeah. you know there's no pattern to it. Um, the only thing that people do on the site that I don't want to say annoys me, they never seem to update their information. You know, they register. Like I've had a few this week where they registered in 2001 and their email's out of date, their, their address is out of date. You know, the only thing you've got to go on is the name. And then we had, I had one that, married, that moved to the US, which, you know, threw me off for a little while because I'm searching England, <laughs> you yeah. know? But uh, the US uh, is, it's, it's it's easier to find people by name. Um, you know, dates of birth are a little bit harder, but not staggeringly harder. But uh, adoption records in America, every state's different. Like some states, you know, New Jersey, where I'm at right now, the uh, they, they just opened it. So you, it's like England, you can get the birth record if you're the adoption, but the birth mother can't get anything. So same exact thing as England. Yeah. But, uh, that's a little bit dive into what I do. So um, is your work, is it mainly, uh, uh, you know, for UK adoptees or is it, is it, is it mainly, what's the, what's the kind of the mix? Um, well, you know, uh, some of the work I do as a job involves finding people um, in the USA, but most of it's in the UK because the register goes crazy. Um, every time I, I get like, you know, 500 members, I'm like, where did that come from? And then one of them will go, oh yeah, you were on Find My Family or something in the UK last night. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> we used to send me newspaper cuttings and video clips, but uh, just lately no one sends me any clips. So I had no idea where it came from, you know? And uh, it's it's pretty hard to keep up with it. I have a couple of volunteers that help. Yeah. Um, but you know, there's, it's, com it's common that people will find their own match on the site that we can find because we, you know, I can't check 300 people in a day. <laughs> No, you no. Know? Wow. But, you know, this started it's it's not it's not a business really, you know, it's it's more fun for me. Um people pay ten pounds to join and that's it, you know. And you do a lot more work than ten pounds sometimes. Like uh I had two in the last month where the only match I could find was that I found them on Facebook and these are people that registered on the site years and years ago and they don't believe you. And I'm like, No, I'm not a scam. I'm you registered on my site, I'm here to give you information. <laughs> you know? and, and they're like uh, and it takes days to get through to them i'm like you know this, if this was a business i'd be i'd be losing money <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah yeah um it's interesting to 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 compare and contrast our own um uh, our own personal search uh, stories because um i didn't i was the one that left it too late i mean i hadn't it hadn't even occurred to me uh, to look for my birth mother um, until probably 10 years after she died. So I didn't miss it by two, two weeks. I missed it by uh, 10 years. Um, but yeah, I have got my um, uh, biological dad's uh, name and I did, did, write him, um, uh, I did write him a letter, but it didn't come back. And we were talking about this last time. I, I, for me, I don't, I don't feel the need to do it. I've been thinking, you were saying like, maybe give it a go. I've been thinking about it a lot this week, not, not to do it. Uh, I, 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 right now, I just don't feel like I'm, um, that, I'm uh, that I'm bothered about it, but um, it, the the backstory goes like it, it, there's a there's a contrast again with the backstory in the fact that so my um, birth mother had been going out with this guy for five months, mm -hmm. and when she she told him um, that uh, this is what I found in the adoption file, um, which had loads of um, notes and about the meetings with the, the social worker or whatever at the adoption council the adoption agency um he didn't want he, he she, your, your birth mother terminated the relationship um rather and didn't tell him um my <laughs> my birth mother told him and that led to the termination of that uh, right, the relationship because right. he just didn't want to have uh, anything to to do with her or support and that's why i was adopted it's like four years before you um and then you said that you you uh but going back to your own search you said well you found your birth mother and you only she only met you met you once and then it was all a little bit weird after that but you found your birth father and that's been that's been great so i guess it's back to that expectations thing is like 
uh, have have no expectations, right? Uh, uh, but also expect the unexpected. You know, right. this, these little weird things that might uh, might put a spanner in the works, might throw us like you know the the different reactions of the of the the, the, the um, uh, your, your half half brothers, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, and that is if so, if, so for, for listeners that are thinking about that search uh, it's, a di- it's a different animal between the mother and the father especially when the father doesn't know you know what I mean the father's all of a sudden if he chooses to be involved he's, he's got to make up for the 30 years that he hasn't been there somehow you know what I mean whereas the mother definitely knew you know so it's, it's a different animal it's, it's all down to whether they knew or not you know the reaction if they knew they obviously made a choice you yeah. know you know and it, it's important to listen to the story and don't go into it hating them right off the bat you know because a lot of people are like why would they give me up you know that's an important thing and like in my case the mother didn't want the relationship and uh, the parents in the early 70s are like oh my god we don't want a, a daughter without a wedding you know and a, a yeah. marriage just having a kid Let's ship them off to the mother and baby home, which was very, very common at my time. Um, that's what happened to me. So yeah, yeah so that's very common. Um, but you know, go into it, listen to the story. You know, if it's a crappy story and they were a piece of junk, then you know what? At least let them tell you that. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Don't, don't, don't go into it. You know, and don't also don't go into it expecting it to be amazing in the middle of the road you know try and try and go into it you know not knowing which way it's going to go like you said you know yeah. i i am um, i was talking to another adoptee this week and um she uh i think it was a she she met her birth mother she did the trace and her birth mother wouldn't acknowledge that she was the the, the um the mother she was kind of well, yeah, you could be, and she knew for certain. But oh, yeah, she was there. Was so <laughs> she was definitely there. <laughs> yeah, it was so fixed. It was so fixed in this mother's head. This is this is the kind of the the weird bit, right? Mm-hmm. It's so fixed in this mother's head that she couldn't be the mother, right? Mm-hmm. She's being told you can't be the mother to this child. You need to give the 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 the, uh, the baby up, right? Right. So in her head, she can't be the mother. And whenever it was, 20, 30 years later, however long it was, I can't remember. She, th- th- this mother, she had got it so fixed in her head that she couldn't be the mother, that she couldn't admit to being the mother. Uh, mm-hmm. For I don't know how long it took. The, the, uh, the adoptee was very patient in the conversation. And then eventually the woman changed, you know, kind of changed her mind. But th- there was so much denial in her head. I mean... Right. It, the, I believe it's true, right? They, they convince believe, themselves. Yeah, um, and I guess that's why the expectations piece is so important. Now we're we're expecting a logical reaction. You yeah, know, you never go. We're, we're expecting a logical reaction for, for, from from somebody, uh, but if this mother uh, was in denial that she was the mother, although you know, like. It's like if you're aware of that possibility happening when you beat um, when you when you meet your birth mother because you've heard two fellow adoptees talking about this, then maybe it won't seem so bad. Because can you imagine what that would what that would feel like? I mean, yeah, that would be pretty. You know, pretty if, if, the, if you, you know it's the mother. You know, you look. Maybe you're looking at the face. You know, maybe it's it's a woman. It's two women looking at each other. Right. And, 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 you know, and the, the, the resemblance. It's obvious, right? It's blatantly like, obvious. Like, because you, you, you talked about your, last week, you talked about your, the fact that your birth mother, uh, your birth father looks just like you. Your, your father. Well, his, yeah, his, the oldest son, his, the kid's high school pictures were exactly the same as me. I mean, they were so similar. He, he made a comment one time that I, I was walking out of my house and he's like, I thought that was my son. You know, so, I mean, technically I am. Yeah. <laughs> You know, um, you know, it's, it's it's strange. I mean, I give you an example of a crazy reaction, a crazy thing in mind. Uh, I was told the birth mother used to put birthday cards out for me every year. 
But then when I met her, she only met me one time. So it's like it's like weird, right? It's like if you if you're that committed to the whole thing, and your parents made you did it, and you want, you know, you 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 didn't want to do it, and now you 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 put out birthday cards every year, but then the real person shows up, and you only see him one time. It's it's a different reaction, right? Because when you get told that story, you're like, oh, this this person's gonna want to talk to me. This person's gonna send me Christmas cards. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like I said, there's there's ones that want to make it up. They want to make up for lost time. And yeah. I've had one actually. It was an American search, but uh, they invited the mother to come stay, and then they couldn't get rid of her. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? They couldn't get her out the house. Yeah. They like, and then the, you know, <laughs> you have to call me mom, and you know, and wow, the kids are like, you know, that's the kid's choice. That's not the mother's choice to say yeah. that. You know, some people do. You know, like I said, I've seen a million reactions. And, and like you said, not, none of them are, there's no normal reaction, and, you know? There's no normal, and, and there's no logic. We're talking about stuff that here that is um, really, really deep. Right. You know, I, I, and, and we could get into a competition, a competition, conversation, whether it's deeper, you know, is it deeper for the dad? Is it deeper for the mum? Is it deeper for the adoptee? But I, I, I guess... My gut reaction has got to be deepest for the birth mother. That's... You know what? Well, the birth mother knows what, why, why things happen, whereas the adoptee doesn't. You know, if the adoptee has a lot more questions. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, you could also see it where the mother doesn't tell you the truth as to what happened because they're embarrassed. You know? Yeah. I mean, if the parents put them into it, they can tell you that. But if they made the decision, you know, cause something bad was, you know, they couldn't support you in their life, bad stuff was going on. You know, it, it's there's there's so many so many possibilities. You know, I think the adoptee is the one that has it the worst because you know the mother made decisions where the adoptee didn't make decisions. You know, yeah, interesting one that interesting one. Uh, it, like we said, like, and I've, I've said it fifteen times already, but it, there's no normal reaction. You know, so you don't know. So, yeah, um, I heard one, I was talking to an adoptee last week, similar age to us, um, and he'd been, he'd been rejected four times by his birth mother, as in, I won't, I, I won't see you. Hmm. Um, that so, goes back to the, what you should know, though. That goes back to you should know, yeah. in my opinion. I mean, I, I can understand how that would really, really, you know, screw some people up a little bit, you know what I mean? But you don't know that's coming, you know, you don't know it's coming. So, you know, you, I guess you find out what kind of person the parent is, you know? Yeah. But it's, it, I think it's better to know. I mean, I'm sure that would mess some people up. But, you know, it, I mean, as I said, I'm not, I'm not trained in psychology. So I don't, you know, I don't know the background. And we always say that, you know, once you find the information, you know, I 99.9% .9 of the time, I don't make contact with the, uh, the birth parent other than through the site. Um, I get there's some rules in place in England where, you know, to do kind of some kind of actual contact, you have to be licensed in some, I guess, counties. And we've run into a few things with that where, you know, are you doing this? You need to get a, a license in this and that and this and this through like, you know, different agencies. And we make sure we don't break any of the rules because it's, you know, it's just a it's just a site to find people. You know, if people put their information on the register, they've already consented. You know, there's a checkbox at the bottom of the form that says, "Do you consent to us giving information out to people that we believe is a match?" You know, so I mean, they've already consented to us finding them, technically. Yeah. You know, but they the government some, in some cases want you to be a passive involvement. You know, so you just give them the information and just let them deal with it. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have to be careful with these uh, the regulations stuff like that. The other thing that um, uh, uh, that I want to just uh, talk talk about in case anybody else share my own experience, just in case it makes any sense to anybody else who's listening. So um, I'd done the first stage. I'd found that I'd got my original birth certificate, which had her name on it. Um, it didn't have the father's name on it. Uh, and I didn't do anything with it. And then I was talking, I was in a therapist's uh, chair and she uh, suddenly this idea, the idea of my birth mother being outside of the, of the room, the therapist room came into my head. 
and uh, and I imagine me opening the door and her rejecting me again. That's how it was in my head, right? Right. I, I, and I thought, um, and I felt I got very uh, angry and scared at the same time. Well, angry and then scared, then angry again. Uh, and I determined that um, I wasn't going to let this fear of uh, another rejection however many 40 odd years afterwards after the first in my head <laughs> in my head that was how i saw it as this rejection doesn't I mean because i wasn't good enough so at that point i i went right i am not gonna <laughs> I, I became very angry and um and I, I and i channeled my anger into the right i'm gonna take the next step and, and i'm gonna get my adoption file and when i got the adoption file I found out how how wrong I was, how wrong mm -hmm. the story, my, the story in my head was, you know. So I had this I had this idea of not being loved enough, and that was completely false. That's that, right. that came through. That came through loud, um, loud and clear from one of the documents in the, in, in right. the file, which. Um, about this about this teddy bear that she'd bought for me and um and wanted to wanted me to to have and it was a letter yeah um a, a letter to the adoption agency asking if she could buy a teddy bear she'd meant to buy a teddy bear for me um on the way to drop me off at the adoption council and she, right. the, the the traffic was really bad so she couldn't she couldn't get to the, the shop so she I was, really, I was really bland when I went into the search because I'd done so many searches for other people, so it kind of felt just like an, yet another search, you know? Oh, um, of course, yeah. Sorry, I got it the wrong way around. You did. I thought you'd done your search. No, you no. I started. I started to look up UK. I mentioned that. Uh, I think yeah, it was yeah. subconsciously. It was like two years earlier. Um, as I said, I think it was like subconscious. I wanted to see other people's reactions. Um, but I done many searches, and it, it, you know what's really weird about searching for things. I've done some searches on, on my wife's side; she wasn't adopted, but we we did some DNA work, and we found out that her grandfather was different to the grandfather they all thought it was. Um, wow! But uh, yeah, that was interesting. But um, and we found all of them, and they were a, a, a family of types. You know, the big family, and half of them were good, and half of them were like, you know, but well, I guess that's normal for a big family, right? <laughs> it's weird, you know. You do all these searches. See me when I can't find someone, it's like a chase. You know, it's like you're trying to figure it out. You know, you're digging around, and and then when you do, when you find them, it's like it's, it's disappointing in a way for me because I'm like the search is over, and that's just like me and the way I think. Not particularly my birth parents, but just when, when searches for people, like I'll have like a really hard one, and it will take me weeks and weeks to figure it out. And then like as soon as you find them, you're like, all right, now I know everything about my life. There's no more searching to do. I've already got the answers, you know, and I'm like, ah, I, want, you know, I want to go do someone else's search now because it's, it's so much fun, you know. I mean, it's so much fun digging around. What, what star sign are you? Cancer. Okay. Because this, I, I'm like, I'm a Capricorn, right? So I, and I, I have no, uh, I'm joking really about this, asking you, because, like, um, uh, but, you know, there's these, these traits that are supposedly to do with our star sign, aren't they, you know? Yeah, and and uh, as Capricorns are really hard hard working, and uh, apparently like uh, you know like really like mountain goats, really persistent, and you know uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know whether I'd call myself hard working or not, but tenacious. And uh, when you were explaining that, I just thought how uh, you know is is tenacity. You're t you're describing a, an incredibly tenacious. Um, um, uh, you know, a, a, a tenacious attitude to, to to the search, and I feel I'm pretty tenacious as well. I'm wondering whether this is this is an adoptee trait, or or whether this is just a coincidence. You know, have you seen? Yeah, it? maybe, maybe. When you met your birth mother, did you um, see any something in common, like that you, that you didn't didn't really stand out to anyone, but you noticed it? Uh, I didn't notice it, so I. I I, I just got, we just got the pictures, so I'd written to. Um, I thought she was dead, and like you, I'd found a name of somebody to write to. It turned out that it was her sister, 
Um, her sister had died as well. And her brother, who lives in Canada, had um, had been clearing the sister's house and found my letter to the sister. Is this making sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so my uncle wrote to me from Canada saying, "I got, uh, I, I found your letter whilst clearing out sister, sister Wan's, um, let's call her Anne." Mm -hmm. fully clearing Anne's house I found out about your birth mother uh, Pat uh, I found I uh, you know you're right Pat Pat has 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 died and um, and I'm I'm your uncle here's the pictures what did you say I'm your uncle I said no I don't, I don't think he just said that but you know he, he talked about him being a, 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 she was my sister and sent a couple of pictures of her of my birth mother um, one on her wedding day, which was a bit weird, um, because she'd married another bloke, not obviously not my biological father, married him a couple of years later after I'd come along. And she'd never had any kids and she'd got divorced and then she'd been single after that. And there were some pictures and, and my, my wife looked at the pictures and she said, her nose looks like yours. <laughs> and I look at it. I look at it. and You don't see it, right? No, I don't see it at all I, I don't don't see it at all um and here's the thing so i searched she would clearly died 10 years before i'd done the search or even longer than that but the information that i found in the letter about the teddy bear and the this other stuff and and, and the story about how the um uh, how the the father had wanted not wanted anything to do with with her or or the or the baby that brought me a lot of that brought me a lot of peace on top of the other big insights that i'd had along the way about you know about i guess self-esteem security and all that sort of stuff so it was although i did the search and she died uh, some say, well, that, that's a real shame that she died. Yeah, that's a real shame. But the stuff that I learned from the files was in, was incredibly freeing for me as well. So, and I couldn't have expected that. You know, right. it's, it's expect the unexpected. If you didn't get that far, you would have gone into it thinking completely different. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've done a lot of healing work before that. Um, but my healing journey has been lo lots of a, a few massive key insights when i've changed mm -hmm. the way I, I think about things did you find her uh, she was dead before the fall or after the fall uh i got the file after the file i got the file I used I, I I got a I, I used somebody a, res, a researcher, um, the researcher found some information like it was a, a notice on a church like an in yeah. an in, in memoriam notice right uh, right right that had been posted on a church website or something like that on a church wall, and I suspected it was her, and then that was confirmed. By. Was it a common name where there could have been 20 others or is it, it was uh, unique, unique enough for it to be? It was, it was unique enough to be. Okay. Unique yeah. enough. But I, had 30, was, I had 36 people for the, for the, you know, the father. So it was like, you know, where do I go from here? You know, but I uh, said, so I wrote letters. Um, I mean, I was, it's weird because the, the father's kids, I look, when I was younger, I looked just like them. Um, I don't see any similarities on the mother, but I've only got two photos. Um, I took some more photos when I was there with my daughter, and I don't remember. I haven't been. I don't know where the hell they went. <laughs> you know, what? I, I don't know. When I when we met them, I took some photos. You know, but I don't know where they went. And like you know, whatever. <laughs> the similarity I noticed is we we both ordered tuna fish sandwiches. Oh yeah. <laughs> what was the similarity oh, that I noticed? Say that again. We both ordered tuna fish sandwiches. Yeah right. Okay. See, this is how long you've been away, buddy. You said tuna. Yeah. Not tuna. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. 
when when we were in uh, I was in a a diner in um, in New York City a few years ago. My wife it was my wife's fortieth, and you know I asked for for some tomatoes, and they looked. It was it, she was Polish or you know right. East European or, or you know she wasn't she wasn't so but she 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 obviously she knew what to, she knew what tomatoes was but she hadn't got a clue what tomatoes were she looked like right. so I've, I should have ordered tomato and tuna <laughs> right one of the words I have the most trouble with is is uh, mafia oh yeah because I say ma and then people say ma in this country and people are like what are you talking about and they make you know one, got, one of my friends makes fun of me for that one <laughs> and then I mean, when I, I talk to British people like I guarantee when I finish talking to you some of my British sayings will come back for a while they may you know they, I, my friends make fun of it you know like I said fire brigade by mistake randomly and they're like what's the what's the fire oh toilet roll was the one the other day I said toilet roll in, 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 in toilet paper over here it's not toilet roll Oh, okay. You know, it's, it's stupid little things. But one of my friends, he, his whole life is find me saying something stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, the cultural differences. Eh? The cultural differences. Uh, well, what did you say? Two uh, two countries uh, disunited. What did you say? United by different languages, isn't it? I, don't know. I can't remember what yeah. they're saying. Um, so, uh, the the search the search process then um i mean if you, you like you're charging 10 quid for this so it's like 10 pounds if you're listening I, I could be getting 100 for this quite easily you know what i mean i mean i'm the only register you know i was, I was the first one there was one run by trace mark that what came and went you know this, this you know this, this, this missing you website which for some reason thinks I hate them, but I don't know, whatever. It, it, I've used them to find people and people from there have used me to find people. So who, who cares, you know? And they're just, a, they're just a message board. They're not a registry, you know? So I have the only registry other than the government one and the government one is on paper. You know, you fill in the form and you mail it. My site, you can find, you can go on it and find your family in like five minutes. Yeah, you and, and you're just doing this. So I, I, like, I, one, of the, one of the questions probably in the head, you know, like, do you want to, um, share any stuff about about the search, but for ten quid, I mean, you might as well just get a pull to do it, listeners. You know, right? You, them, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. yeah there's it's, fun, it's funny because I did a big search for someone and I spent weeks and weeks doing it, and all I got was thank you. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, you could you could at least cover the, you know some of the searches. Um, one of one of the most useful tools I have is um, do you remember when they had info discs? Remember those things? Yeah, remember those. So ICD, which is now 192.com, they put out info discs in the 90s. And I don't know if it's a rule now, but they, they're not allowed to publish online anything that's not edited. They let, you know, because before nine, before 2002, I think it was, they published the whole voters registry. But after that, they only did the edited one. And they put out a disc called The Decade. It was a DVD, and it covers 1992 to 2000. And it was the full electoral roll, and that disc will find people that the new stuff won't. Yeah. You know, once you got an once you got an address, you can start to work your way. You know, you can start to start to work your way. I mean, if it if it's John Smith, you're really in trouble when it comes to finding him. You know. So the, Facebook's a good tool too. Facebook, you can, Facebook, you can find a boatload of people. You know. The, the information that so what what's the you um let me run the process by you just and then you can tell me whether i'm right or wrong so so you've got first off you need you, you need the biological your, your biological mum's name right and the address uh, uh, the, the the name and the address so right. you get that from writing you, uh, where do you get that from you get that you, you need the okay you so when you apply for your original birth certificate and you go through the whole motion you get uh, the birth certificate um, and in England, the birth certificate show, shows the, your regular, the regular address of the person, and then it shows the address they were at when you were born, right? And then the address where you're born is, is useful to find your file, right? Because it's, okay. chances are it's a mother and baby place or it's a adoption center or some garbage. So what, um, what chances are it's not, a it's, not, it's not your house, <laughs> you know what I mean? So what's but the, the address website, at the time is way more useful. 
What's the website where people get the original birth certificate from? It's if you go on the gov.uk, you can search for adoption records. I don't remember the whole path, but yeah, if you go on gov.uk and type in adoption records. It's also the website where the government register is. Um, the only thing that's good about the government register is I think they allow you to like write a letter and put that on file. And I think they let the birth mothers do that too. Um, but on my site, there's like a comment box that you can put in anything you want. So it's kind of the same. Um, so if you've got the birth, if you've got the birth, if your biological mother's name and the address. Well, and- first I'll do is I'll, I'll look at the address and see if there's any the relatives. Rest, you'll, you'll, name. Do the, you'll do the rest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do, 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 do the red, look at the address, see if there's any relatives, go back as far as I can. Um, then I'll just do a search for the birth mother's name through the whole country. If I get one or two, I'll, I'll look at them. I'll go on uh, findpass.uk and I'll look and I'll see the order they were born in. Um, cause it, without ordering the certificate, you can't see the date of birth in England. So I'll, I'll look at the quarter and then if, um, if it matches, you know, chances are it was 17 or 18. That's a very good number to look at. It's not always true, but you look at the court, you know, you'll be able to narrow, you'll be able to kick some out because, you know, they were they were 10 when you were born. So, you know, you can pretty much throw them out of the out of the window. Um, and if you can't find any matches, the next thing is going to be looking for marriages. Again, on uh, findpass.uk or freebmd.org.uk, I think it is. Um, but Find Pass is a good site, and you can do this, the searches with the quarters for free, you know? Um, so look for marriages, because you can put in spouse's name and leave the husband's or you know name blank. And again, if you come up with one, you know, or two, you can start to narrow. It, you know, it also tells you where the marriage was, and you know, a lot of the time, it, it seems to be very common that there's a marriage six months after you were born, Wow. Which, which it's very common. I've seen, it seems that, you know, maybe the, the new, the new husband, the new boyfriend was involved in getting the kid adopted because they don't want the kid of somebody else, you know? So it's, it's quite common to find the, uh, to find, to find the, uh, the, 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 the marriage within a year. I've seen that a lot. Um, now, you know, if you've narrowed, if you're lucky, you've, you now you have a, a, a a, a husband's name and the new name of the, of the wife who is the mother um you can also look up birth records on there but you can only do it by surname but if you've got like a really uncommon surname for just one of those people you know because it it lists um on a on the birth certificate it lists the mother's maiden name and then it lists the father's actual name right so you can start using those two keys so now you have two two names to narrow it you know I mean, if it's Smith and Jones, you know, you're going to, again, you're going to be in trouble because you're going to find 5 billion kids. You can narrow it to years. You know, most people have kids pretty, pretty soon after they get married, you know, within three or four years. So again, you can narrow it down. You can pick out all the kids that were born wow. 10 years earlier, you know, um, chances are they're not, especially if when there's an adoptee involved, chances are the adoptee was, was born before any kids in the relationship. Um, so you, again, you can narrow it. You can narrow that down. Um, go on the electoral roll. Try and find either of the people. Go on Facebook. Try and find either of the people. Go and look up UK. See if there's any messages. Yeah. Go on missing you. See if there's any messages. Um, just search. You know, search. You know, Facebook is great. Once you start getting kids' names, you've got the husband's name. You got the wife's name. You you can find people on Facebook. Again, if it's an uncommon name, you're going to be sitting there for days trying to figure it out. Um, but, you know, throw all those in the electoral roll. Um, uh, people look up code at UK, which is one of my sites. Um, we have the ability to search by address, actually by postcode, so we can find people who are living at one address. It also has the ability to search for two names living at the same address. You know, so if you've got John Smith and Lisa Smith, you can put both those names into the advanced search and it will give you a lot of matches, you know. None of these sites have everything. Lookup UK has slightly different data to 192.com. Um, we have a button on the Lookup site uh, that you can click for more info and it actually goes to the 192 site. Um, so you can, with that, you can find initials of people. Um, 
Yeah. And find you don't new need to pay for ten quid. Sorry, it sounds like I'm plugging. Well, look up UK. Look up the people look up UK site. It, people look up UK is like two two pounds for a search. So I'm I'm giving it away. Whereas you know, one nine two is charging twenty pounds. Mm. You know, but uh, my wife's trying to be discreetly talking to me, and she's awful. <laughs> 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 you know? She's like this. I'm going out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we know. Go. Bye. Yeah, bye. I'm on a podcast here. This, every woman in my life is a problem. You know yeah. what I mean? We're keeping it real. We're what? keeping it real. We're, we're keeping it real. Sometimes my wife comes in, you know, uh, when I'm on a call or something and there's a cup of tea arriving, you know. <laughs> right? And she says, right. Are you talking to one of those weirdos again, Simon? Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awkward, yeah. <laughs> Did, did she encourage the search? Or was it? Was it? Did you meet her way after you did it, or were you with, with her? When, you know, you said you waited, waited a while, so I'm assuming you were with her when it all happened. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I, I um, uh, I've been with my wife for for ages. Yeah, uh, we got married in '96, and I, I was '97. Yeah, wow. My, it's it's odd because uh, my wife doesn't like my birth. <laughs> She refused to meet her because she had that, you know, that negative impression from the start, you know. Mm. So it's, it's kind of odd, you know. Now I got now I'm someone who's not an adoptee getting weird, weird opinions. <laughs> it's kind of weird. The whole thing is weird. That's the main thing. The, yeah. the, 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 the uh, I guess the logistics of this stuff are for a guy like you that knows what it's doing and um, are, are, are walking the park. The emotional side of it is somewhat different. Right, and as I said, I, it's it's fun for me being on the outside, watching people find, you know. And again, the end of the chase, the end of the chase to me is a little bit of a letdown. I mean, it's great that you just found a person. It's you know, you might have the best relationship ever, but to me, it's like, oh well, that, you know, I I could be searching for years and years to find someone, especially yeah. in America, because it's a lot harder in some senses. Um, then you find them, and you're like, well. Phew. What we're going to do it's, now. it's like me it's like i have all my answers now so to, the fun of trying to find them is like over all of a sudden well, that's it yeah i mean i guess you know? <laughs> this 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 is the thing so i think well the thing popped into my head was some some business stuff that really sparked my um uh, sparked my search so i'd been i i you know my whole uh, adult life was kind of fixated on business, thinking that business success, <laughs> which was very elusive for me and pretty short lived when it happened, um, thinking that was going to make me happy. And then, and then right. it was like, so what? And um, and I guess that's the same thing with uh, with the with the search. You know, it's like, right. so what? Um, I, the the strangest story I heard about this sort of thing is um johnny wilkinson the um the british the english rugby captain who took it he took us to um kicked us to victory in 2003 and you, you gotta check this out listeners this this podcast will blow your mind so put in high performance podcast mm -hmm. johnny johnny wilkinson uh and uh listening for about it's an hour um and his view on life is absolutely incredible but he talks about the elation of winning the World Cup. Right, right, right. Lasting three seconds. Right, right, right. Now, he was, I think he was about 23 at that time when he when he kicked the, I think he was 23. And his whole life had been building to this day. Mm -hmm. You know, he dreamt of it as a kid. He dreamt, he, he dreamt right, right, of right. winning the World Cup with England as a kid. And then when he got there, it was like three seconds of elation. And he said, two weeks after that, two weeks, two weeks after that at that time, um, it it was was the one of the worst periods of his life. Maybe uh, maybe um, that falls into that it can't get any better than this. Everything else I'm going to have in my life from now on is not going to be as good as this. Well, you, know, you could you could be a put, hit person on like you know on the TV and a movie, and then you know the next movie you make is crap. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, it could definitely be that. Um, I'm wondering how, how would I sum it up? 
I would say it was like a hollow victory for him. It right. Was like, so what? It was more exciting that, for the people in his team. But the expectation, the, it, it, the the victory didn't didn't live up to his expectations. Right. And what uh, did he expect to happen? I'd love to know what he expected to happen. It, it just thought, well, did I he guess expect, you know, leave. fireworks to go off and everybody be his friend for the next. 50 well, they years. were. They were. They were. Right? <laughs> everybody, they worship, everybody worshipped him, you know. Um, but it, it was. Um, I, I'm. Although it sounds I'm like I'm not telling a, a, a I'm, I'm talking about something that has no relevance to the adoption search. Or that. No, I know what you're but saying. It's like, it's like everything. Yeah. yeah. Everything. When you find them. So when you find them, thinking, is, is it yeah. disappointing now or not? You know, I mean, you could have the guest, you could have the best thing ever. But now you know the answer to the question that you've wanted for 25 years. You know, yeah. do you ever, did you ever get involved in a search where it turns out to be the aunt of the adoptive parents? <laughs> That's a that's a real good one because the the adoptive parents are like nah nah you, you know and then you, if you do it on your own they don't re realize you're doing it because a lot of people hide the fact that they're searching from their adoptive parents you know in my case I didn't realize my mom would be supportive of it but she didn't want my dad to know because my dad was closer to me um, so we didn't tell him and that, you know he passed away a couple of years ago um, but she's you know she's asking me to see photos and stuff and I'm like this is so weird you know. And I, and most of, it's not, I think a, few, a lot of people wait till their parents are gone, you know, to search. Yeah. I mean, I, I felt um, disloyal. I didn't tell my mum right. about the search until last year when I decided to get into the world of adoption and see how I could. I wonder, I wonder if she was happy that you didn't, like, have this great relationship with your birth mother, you know? Yeah. Oh, wow. You never got to meet her. You know what I mean? Do you, do you have a relationship with uh, the the uncle still, or oh, any of the family swap. kids? We we uh, we swap uh, we we swap Christmas cards and that's about it. Interestingly, okay. I put when I got the letter from him, I wrote back and I put my phone number and my email and stuff like that. Now it may be just because he's an old guy, right, right, right. In his eighties, he doesn't do tech or he doesn't do email, um, or uh, actually. But that that um, that reason for him not emailing me back or calling mm -hmm. me had never occurred to me till I just said it. Then I just thought he right. was kind of trying to keep me at arm's length with yeah. the letter. I I I haven't heard from my birth mother since like the late nineties, and I've moved three times since then. And it it struck me literally last Christmas that she probably doesn't know my address. She's probably she doesn't know how to find people in America, right. you know what I mean? So I wrote a Christmas card randomly and I made out like it was a change of address, even though I've lived in this house for 13 years, but I know she doesn't have the address. And I lived in another house before that for eight years and I know she didn't have that address. So I just did a you know change of address card and I just mailed it to her to see if I get an email or a text or anything in the regular mail, nothing, nothing. you know? But, uh, and, and one thing we haven't mentioned is DNA tests. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't mentioned DNA tests, and they can be quite useful. In England, it's kind of hard because not a lot of people have done them. I think it's like a million people have done them in England, where in America, it's 10 times that, at least. Um, it's odd. If I hadn't found them, uh, if I did a, I did a DNA test, and my uh, half-brother was on it. Wow. So I, I got a massive score with him, you know, which you get. You get a massive score with people that close. Um, like basically half your DNA matches, you know? So I would have found him that way if I didn't find any other thing. Whether or not he would have helped me, I don't know, because he was actually the oldest one. And he but, was the one who was grumpy, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you don't know You don't know if he would have helped you. He definitely would have got a name out of it, you know, because his last name was the same name. If, I, if she hadn't told me the name, I mean, this is years later. DNA's only been around a few years, you know? But uh, it's, kind of, it's useful when it's a common name. You can find if you can find a cousin, you can literally build a family tree on ancestry, work your way back. You know what I mean? Wow. Um, and, and and that's been useful in America for finding people too, because you know you don't have the birth parent names in a lot of places in America. But the DNA test gives the whole thing away. You know, if you do a DNA test and there's, you know, 400 names that are the same last surname, you're like, okay, 
it's just you got to just figure out which side of the family they're on you know if you do i think it's a y chromosome dna test will only list the mother's side so you can narrow it you can narrow it because the dna is a, it's, it's a certain way so you can tell if it as long as the whole line is mothers is mother of mother of mother of mother you can find that on the dna um there's a son there and then a mother then it just throws the whole thing off um but you, you know you can find the mother's side quite close um i hope the dna gets bigger in England. you know it'll be good for people trying to find you but as i said before 1975 they were told you weren't going to find them yeah they've got a whole different mindset you know anyone born after 75 is probably like he's going to find me anyone before that's like he's not he's not going to be able to find me but then you know you pop up yeah. So. There was, there's one un, t- totally unrelated, well, kind of unrelated to DNA stuff, but um, I, I'd thought, I, I thought that uh, my birth mother had the option of abortion. Um, I only found out a couple of weeks ago that she didn't because abortion wasn't uh, legalised until 1967 in the UK. Right, or, and I don't know if that's the UK or England. Do you, do you know what I mean? No, when, I uh, Ireland uh, is Ireland. I can't remember. Recently, there was a case of a girl that was raped, and they had to sneak her out of Ireland. I don't know how recent it was. I remember hearing the story. They had to sneak her out of Ireland to get an abortion. Yeah, there's some strange. I don't know. If, I don't know if things have changed. I don't know how recent that story is, because I, I I only read it you know in the last couple of years. I don't know how Ireland started it. I guess it, I guess we should be happy, right? You especially, because you missed it. You you, you know your parents could have had that choice. You know, I, I do. I, I do find that in in England, um, adopting is more accepted than. I don't know, abortion is like a bad word, right, to some people. But I guess there was, there was way more people adopted back in the day because of the stigma around that, whereas yeah. now people don't seem to care, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I, heard some, I heard some interesting stats on this and, and they are very uh, approximate, okay? Something like when we were around, and, and, and I don't know the abortion part of it, but I know uh, something like 97, I think, so this is presumably before abortion, maybe 90, late 90, 90s percent of single mothers would have their kid adopted, right? Uh, and now it's the other way around. So you see, maybe two percent, maybe two percent of, of 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 single mothers have, have. How many mother and baby homes are there in England now, if any? I don't know. I would imagine there's none. I don't. Know. Right. So you know, back then there was obviously it was obviously accepted. You know, because if they had you know fifty mother and baby homes, maybe a lot more. The you know. Yeah, yeah, it's well, kind I, of the plan, you know. The parents are like, "Oh my God, I don't want my neighbors to see this." So you know, yeah, I was sent, my, my birth mother was sent to. Um, uh, she was sent to Anglesey, like a little. It's a little island off uh, North Wales. So right. she, she was from Blackpool, and she was sent to Anglesey. It's uh, like they put they they move them just far enough away, right? Yeah, it's like twenty miles, thirty miles, I guess. I don't yeah. know. And, and then from Anglesey, she was then shipped to um, to the hospital to, to have me in the hospital. Mm-hmm. And then she, uh, then she had to give me, then, well, then she she put me with, a, they, they put me with a short-term foster parent. Foster, right, right. Yeah. I haven't and then she, she had to come back and collect me from there um, to take me to the adoption. Agency. This is all the stuff that I counsel, you know, uh, this is all the stuff that I found in the file. So she it's funny you mentioned the teddy bear. It, it just came to me that my mother, my birth mother, when she met me, she gave me the thing that they put around your ankle. Wow. So I have that in my safe deposit box. I just remembered that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's uh, little things. There was someone else I was going to ask you, but it's just gone right out of my head. It'll come back in a minute, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the stigma, the stigma sent sent away to these birth and months, and, and what they must have been going through at the time, you know. That's, I think a lot of them were forced, right, by the parents. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about this in the UK at the moment. Yeah. There's a, a, there's a, a, there's a lot of talk about this forced uh, forced adoption, and um, I mean, from the files, you can't tell. I mean, she was. 
she was 22, I think, when she had me, 22, mm-hmm. 23. So she wasn't, you know, she was a bit more grown up than some kind of 14 year old or something like that, you know. So, um, well, there's your cup of soup we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, well. <laughs> I, there was something, uh, this wasn't what I was trying to remember, but do you remember, like, I, I found myself watching TV and imagining someone with the same name. Because when I was about 10, um, when I found out I was adopted, I had made a comment that I didn't look like my brother, randomly. I feel like it must have been before 10, because we moved into our new house at 10, so it must have been before that, maybe 8. And that's when my mom gave me this letter was like an introduction letter they got you know like a little bit of background about the mother and the father um you know here's an in here's your here's your letter do you want this kid you know you know what i mean <laughs> and they named the name leslie in the in the letter i was eight right so it was weird because i'd be watching blue peter <laughs> and i see leslie judd and i'm like for the longest oh, yeah. time i'm like i wonder i wonder if you know yeah I mean, I don't know if you, you, you found your stuff way older, so you, you didn't think anything no. stupid like that. <laughs> you know? no, I didn't, I, I didn't find myself, I, I, but I did, I thought Leslie Judd was quite, um, quite, you know, like I was quite interested in Leslie Judd. Right. I, was talking, I was talking to a... This would be a weird conversation if that was true right now. <laughs> it, it would, it would, yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 kind of, I didn't, I, I, was, I was talking to somebody in Milwaukee this week um, uh, uh, which was home, the home of the Fonz, wasn't it? Right. Uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, you know, Richie Cunningham and, and Joni and Chachi mm-hmm. and uh, Mr. C and mm-hmm. the Fonz. Um, uh, and yeah, I was talking about how the fact I, I really fancied, uh, how, uh, you know, who she was called, um, what's she called, Joni? Right. How, Richard, Richie Cunningham's little sister. When she grew up, you know, mm-hmm. and she was in Joni Love Chachi, I really liked her. Um, no, I didn't have that. I, I, I didn't have the, uh, th- that looking for the name of, you know, thinking, watching telly or anything like that. But it brings up an interesting point that I see a lot in adoptee groups, which is um, we're looking for validation. We're looking for somebody else that feels the same as us. Um, right. Which and, maybe that explains why I do searches. Yeah. Yeah, you know it does probably. Yeah, I mean, I've done some. I've done some searches in America, which were next to impossible. Um, and I, I you know, the, I, I, the here's the interesting part, especially in America. You you got your adoption file, right? So there's there's, there's going to be something in that adoption file that's so insignificant that you just skip over it and don't think anything of it. You know, it's the key to finding them. You know, like, you know, you could be John Smith, but it could just mention that you were a, a welder or you had a hobby. Like my adopted dad, he used to uh, race motorcycles with sidecars. Um, and if I was looking for him, I could have, in the local newspaper, I could have found tons of articles on him from the motorcycle thing. And his name was pretty common, not quite as common as Smith, but up there. Um, but this it's, it's so, so insignificant little things, you know. So how how do you um? You mean because you, clearly you're just you know you, you're getting somebody's filling in the form. They're not going to be giving you all this these little insignificant details. Well, most, yeah, most of the time, it, it, if people just find the form on the site, you know, I don't do the search when someone registers. I you know I the form just goes on the site. You know, the, my time is like. I don't want to say included, but, um, you know, it's when people email me, you know, as well as putting on the site, you know, I, I get a lot of emails where like, Hey, I'm looking for this person. And I'm like, did you register on the site? You know, and I'll look on the site and find that the birth mother's already on there. You know, and they didn't bother looking. They just, you know, wanted me yeah. to do the work for them. Um, we, we, we seem to be becoming very lazy these days, don't we? As, right. As, like, like, well, I can't be bothered. I mean, you've got tools now. You've got tools now, like, you know, like uh, people look up .co.uk, my site, and then you've got people locate .co.uk, .uk, um, and you've got other sites like that that we never had before. The internet is a wealth of information, you know, sites like Ancestry. Um, I was looking for someone, I mean, it was in America again, 
but I found the the wedding on Ancestry randomly and it gave away the new name. And then when I looked at the address, the new name was there, but I'd overlooked it before because I just thought somebody else moved in. Oh, wow. You know, um, sometimes you're so close. You're so close right away and you don't realize how close you are, you know. Um, but uh, like I, I mentioned before, the one where you find out it's the aunt that's the parent, that one, that was a good one. <laughs> it was definitely a good one. Um, and then you read in the paper, I've never had one, but you read in the paper where the kids meet somehow, you know, and some, you know, some of them, are, you know, they're dating and you're, you know, and then you're like, oh, the parents are like, they know what's going on, but they don't want to tell them, but they're like, this is crazy. You know, when you, when you've matched over, you know, thousands of people on the site, you get to see everything. You get, you get to see some crazy stuff, you know, you, you really do, you know. It, it, yeah, it's it's you get to see some crazy stuff, and I don't want to say I enjoy crazy stuff, but it's definitely better. You know, it's definitely a, a turn away from uh, just regular searches that take ten minutes. You know. Yeah, yeah. And just to be uh, clear, listen, uh, Paul does this all kind of like on the side. He's got he's got prop proper. He uh, got a proper job as well. Hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. So you know, I, I haven't had a lot. I haven't had a lot of time to do searches for people that much. Um, I have other hobbies and, and um, my job, um, but the register works on its own. You know, like I said, you know, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people registered, um, and you can you can go on there and you can if you're a birth mother, you can search by the birth name or parts of it. Um, it's, it, it is a weird thing. You, some people don't realize they can get their original birth certificate. That's how lazy they are at searching. Because <laughs> if you type in adoption records UK. The government site is definitely in the first couple of results and it tells you that right off the bat you know some people will come to me and say hey i'm adopted i don't know anything and i'm like well where do we start <laughs> you know go get, go get your like your birth certificate you know yeah well we don't know what we don't know do we and and right. we live in a world where everything's done for us so you know like I, we got people we got a holiday cottage right so people ring up and like i on they, they ring up and ask what did they ask for uh restaurants <laughs> you've heard of right. google <laughs> you've heard of google, google maps. <laughs> you know <laughs> but you know, i think we're just we're also impatient and like well somebody i was going to say something rude there you know <laughs> we want people to wipe stuff for us you know <laughs> right you know exactly yeah, yeah. um I just want to go back to that point I was talking about, you know, about the uh, the Johnny Wilkinson and putting off, him, him, you know, his expectations not being met, uh, and um, and you know, the do not, I, this is going to sound, this is going to sound really bloody obvious, but mm. it, it, and yet it, it it isn't right. Don't assume that the. But well, you the, learn that you learn that the hard way. Don't assume. Don't assume, and and don't put your life on hold. You know, right. you, 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 every, as one of my mentors says, right? Every feeling that you want is right inside you, right now. So right. it's not going to come. If it, it, you know, we've got this idea that. This is going to happen, and that's going to be, and and that, and, and we're going to. First off, we don't know what's going to happen to the search, but we've got this idea. If it works out, then it's going, to, everything's going to be different, or everything's going to be better. But we have no idea how we're going to feel. I don't. I don't think. Uh, no I, idea how we feel. I, I think, yeah, like we had said before, you know, expect it to be different to what you think it's going to be. You know, don't go into it thinking it's going to be great or it's going to suck. They're going to talk to you. They're not going to talk to you. They're not going to tell you the father's name. They are going to tell you the father's name. The father knows about you. The father doesn't know about you. You know, the grandparents are idiots because they pushed the guy to be adopted, but it could have been much worse. Um, you don't know. It's, it's, yeah. There's no idea. You don't know the person. You don't know the family. Don't know. You don't, you know, you know your family. I bet, you know, you could, certain family members you have, that you know what the reaction is going to be to a certain situation, right? You know, you know, this guy's going to get pissed off about this. <laughs> you know, as soon as you tell this guy this one thing, you know, you know exactly how he's going to feel, you know, but you don't know these people. 
you don't know them at all. The only, only thing I, you do find is you'll find that the stuff about you is common with them. It might just be something insignificant, like a tuna fish sandwich. <laughs> you know, you know? I noticed it. I noticed it. One of my favorite things is tuna fish. So the yeah. fact that she ordered, because she ordered first. She didn't see what I ordered and be sneaky and go, oh, look, we ordered the same thing. She ordered first, you know, and I'm sitting there going, okay. And it's the dumbest thing, but, you know, you notice it, you know. So don't, don't expect you know what's going to happen. Right. Don't expect you don't expect to know how they're going to react. And Their reactions are different from the birth mother to the birth father. Yeah. Um, especially when the birth father doesn't know. You can't, you can't blame someone for anything they didn't know about. You know? Whatever, however the father reacts, if he didn't know about it, you can't blame him for anything. He's just as innocent in it as you are. Yeah. Good you know? And don't expect to know how you're going to feel when all this happens. Right, because so, you don't know their reactions, so how do you know what yours is going to be? Uh, yeah. So you know. this is... Like we can't tell you anything, so I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, no fair, no therapist, no therapist in the world. I don't care how good you are, is going to be able to tell you what's going to happen. No. Oh. I don't well, care how great you are, and I don't care if you're on the street in London and that's the most famous street for being a therapist. I don't care if it costs me two grand to talk to you for twenty minutes. You're not going to help me at all because you just not unless you go talk to the birth mother first. Yeah. As I'm sure people have done. You know, I've I've had adoptees that uh, they they keep the the birth mother at arm's length. They use a separate email address for them. They don't tell them their last name right now. You know, they don't tell them anything about it. They just want to know about the person. Um, there's a tip there, guys. There's a there's a big tip there. Um, yeah, yeah. You can set up a separate email account. Right. Yeah. I. It's some, some people. So, so some obvious. people. Uh, but, some people they have their aunt join the registry. Or the sister of the birth mother joins the registry, or the daughter of the, and, and it may be on their behalf. The parent might not know they're doing it because you know maybe the parent doesn't want anything to do with you, the birth mother. But then the the, the son or the daughter of them, they want to know the, what's going on, you know. And I mean, is it is it bad that they chose to join the registry with information about the birth mother when the birth mother doesn't want to be involved? You know, I don't know. I mean, I think you have the right to know, right? If, if like, uh, if you had a brother that you didn't know about and they suddenly popped up, you know, would you be upset with them? Would, should, I mean, your birth mother's gone, but wouldn't, would the birth mother be upset if she was alive? If she chose to do this, do that, the family member changed that, you know, said, hey, I want to know. Yeah. I mean, that's when you talk about um, uh, that, that, those surprises and people want to know. And the other, an expectation. So a, a friend of mine, um, he he wasn't adopted, but he found out he had a like half brother or something, and it was great, mm -hmm. uh, and it was great. Um, and then it all went to the proverbial rat stuff. So you don't, you know, like we're we're just saying we don't know what to expect. We don't know what to expect in terms of search outcomes. We don't know what to expect what to expect in terms. Of reactions from the birth mother and birth father family etc we don't know what to expect how we're going to feel we don't expect we don't, we don't want to uh, we don't know how to uh, sorry we don't know what to expect in how that may change right. so it's like it's like this is really uncertain everything is really uncertain you get you get better of, reactions you get better reactions on the registry than you do on a separate search the registry people have joined it right so they they have the intention of finding someone if the birth mother's on there she's she has the intention of being found if it was a bad situation she may not have joined you know what i mean yeah but when you do a separate search that has nothing to do with the registry you know you don't you don't know what the reaction is going to be because you have no you know you have you, you don't know the person was looking for you or doesn't want to talk to you you know i mean however bad it is you know it's it's got to be pretty rough for the birth mother. I mean, if she made the choice, and it you know, and it was a, she made it you know the, the she didn't she didn't want anything to do with the kid, you know, blah blah blah. I'm sure that's still in her head for the next 25, 30 years. You know what I mean? Should I have done that? Maybe when they're older, they're like, oh my god, why did I do that? 
Well, I mean, I, I watched those. Uh, I watched Long Lost Family. I tried to get Nicky Campbell said he would come on the show mm -hmm. on the on the uh, you know on a on a tweet on a tweet direct mm -hmm. DM uh, to me on Twitter, but then then he's not responding. But I, I think he gets quite a lot. Of, he's he's on he's very active on social media. He gets lots of messages. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, yeah, when I watched that show, it the the the, the mother's love for their kids is just like. As clear as night and day. I mean, not that, that's not that's, that's the wrong metaphor. Isn't it? mm -hmm. It's as, as it's as clear as the nose on my face. Mm -hmm. How much birth mothers love that. It's. Yeah, we get a feeling they only they only put the good ones on that show. Uh. Well. I mean, I mean, I mean, did you ever watch the TV show Catfish on no. MTV? No. Okay, so they're, they're finding people that are pretending to be people, like someone's dating someone, but it's using, they're using fake photos. It's not them. They're using a fake name. It's not them, but they're actually in a five-year relationship, and they've been lying the whole time. And uh, you watch that show, and if you know some of the technical stuff that goes on behind the scenes, you have researchers that do the whole search before. <laughs> they are So the people on the, the, people on the show... They don't know they don't know tv company knows because you know i don't know how it is in england but you know you have to consent to being on a tv show right in some way in some situations so people already found the person and got the consent for them to be able to pop up on the zoom chat or whatever you know wow. and, you know and they've already been to the, the researchers have already been to the people's houses and knocked on the door and found out if it's right you know and they don't get no credit it's all staged. Yeah, it's, 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 it's I mean, maybe the people that are actually on the show, you know, because I mean, I, I, they, the British one just came out and it wasn't that great. Um, some of the stuff, I, in America, I noticed they used a couple of sites that are not that great. There's, there's much better sites they use. So, you know, they're getting paid to use these other crappy sites. And, and about two minutes into it, I already know how they, how they could have found them. But they milk it for a forty-five minute show, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I'm like, why don't you don't use this? Why why aren't you using this site? I don't understand why you. So they're mentioning they're mentioning the site as part of a product placement. Oh, right. yeah. Um, they, they, they don't mention them, but you see the screenshot with the big yeah. logo on the top of it, uh, you know. And you're like, why, this site is not as good as these other sites that might be free, you know. Like, uh, why didn't you reverse search the phone number? You know, you could have done that in two seconds. Why didn't you do that? They do it on some shows, but not on others. And I'm like, if they reverse us, you can solve a lot of these things in a minute and a half. Yeah, but th there's no story. There's no story. Right. Exactly, you know. It's the, the most disappointing episodes of Catfish is where the person turns out to be the real person. <laughs> You're sitting there going, I hope it's that. I hope it's the ex-boyfriend, you know, pretending to be a girl, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah I, 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 I take some... I, I, I was involved in a few of the British TV shows. It's been so long, I couldn't even tell you the names of them. But I did a lot of the re I did a lot of the research for them, you know. And then they went on TV and acted like they did it. I got a credit at the end of the show in the research, but uh, you know, I I, I, I don't know if it's to find my family US. You know, they have people rake through ancestry and find stuff, but then on the show they find it in like two minutes. Yeah, and, and you're like, there's no that took. Days and days of raking around to find that. We just read. We found this. Like you said, you found an article, and your person found an article in a church, right? Did they find that in a day, or did it take a while to find that? I can't remember. I mean, did they, uh, did they find it in a day and make out like it took them weeks so they could make? No, it no, no. I, I, I used. Um, have you heard of Upwork? You must have heard of Upwork. No. Oh, Upwork's a really cool site. You get. It's like a digital job board. So any any task that can be done online. Mm -hmm. um uh, gets you know you put you, you put the job on and um and, and people from around the world bid and you know, the lowest, oh, so kind uh, of like fiverr it's fiverr like fiverr but it's yeah. like it's like business class fiverr right. yeah mm -hmm. okay. um and um yeah so I, I you know i paid somebody whatever for that search it wasn't a lot of money i would they, they, it was a fixed you can go fixed price or you can do pay per hour but uh, obviously right. I, don't, I don't do I just do fixed price. Uh, oh. So they, they didn't make out that it took them a long time. 
Um, but yeah, they just probably just use Google or maybe they had some access to some old records or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I love I love to keep you know, old, 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 old database sites that I find that are just sitting there. I like to keep them handy in the back. Of, you know, you're like, OK, I bet you I can go over here and find this person, you know. But uh, yeah. Have you because you're pretty you, obviously you've done some you said you've done some um uh you know work for for these tv shows but you're pretty low-key you don't you, you don't go out sort of doing many do you do many interviews i mean i've is this um i've done a lot a lot you know a long time ago i really don't time, not which is kind of weird because you know i i get emails from tv shows saying that we're trying to find this and we're trying to find that and we'll give you a credit we'll plug your website you know, and I'm like, all right, whatever. You know, it's I could, I mean, if I let's put it this way, if I was unemployed, I'd put a lot more time into it, and I I'd push it like that, you know. But um, I mean, some days I see people register that don't pay the ten pounds, and I'll be like, whatever, I'll just like to shove them on there, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, like, you know, it's it. If you, if you when you register you press okay you know you consent the stuff's there and then you get a page that says here's how you pay 10 pounds and they'll be like oh my god i'm not paying 10 pounds which to me is bizarre i'll pay you know a researcher 500 pounds but they won't pay 10 pounds to be on a register but the more people that's on it the easier it is to find someone you know listen my friend um i'm looking at the clock and it's we've been on an hour and a half can you believe that yeah <laughs> wow well, I I, I, my mom doesn't tell me when i gotta go to bed so i don't you know I'm not like <laughs> you, <but laughs> you, you know you're in trouble when the second cup of tea comes in right <laughs> you know? you're gonna get off that computer <laughs> yeah right or, or if you've been married a long time like we have feel free to stay on the computer as long as you want just don't wake me up when you come to bed that's the, that's the common saying in my house. Don't, just don't wake me up. And I'll come to bed with a cup of tea and then I'll, I'll shove the TV on at two o'clock in the morning and she will get so bent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to sleep. I'm like, you know, I have to go to work at six, right? What time are you getting up? I don't know, nine. I'm like, don't give me a hard time. I want to watch TV at 2 a.m. Watching TV at 2 a.m. <laughs> hey, Paul, thanks for coming on and sharing your, your stuff. Out. That's it's been UK fun. birth adoption registered dot com. Yeah. And, uh, if you have messages to post, look up uk.com. If you have searches to do, people look up uk. I can't even say my own website. People locate .co.uk. Um, every one of them, I'm much cheaper than nearly every site there is out there. I'm only doing this for fun. I'm not, and I'm not a millionaire from doing this. I could turn it into a full time business if I wanted to because I have the skills to find people. But, um, you know, it, 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 it's kind of an adoptee. To help adoptees, you know. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to put all the the links in the in the show notes and uh, uh and so if you're driving or anything, don't worry about it. You know, they'll be there for you. Don't need to pull over. Anything. Um. Thanks a lot, Paul. Thanks for coming on. Um, sure. It's been it's been great chatting, buddy. You too, buddy. Thanks so much. Take care.